Hey everyone, Glitch here. I'm out in Colorado with my dog. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Welcome back to Hack 5. Ah! Hey, Hey everyone, I hope you all had a great Halloween. I'm still out here tooling around in the van. I'm actually in Colorado, kind of stuck at the moment because for the last couple of days, it's been pouring down snow and the van's not exactly equipped to deal with that. I don't have chains like I should or, you know, good snow tires or anything yet. So things for the to-do list. Anyway, I figured while I was stuck, I'd get a video out to you all. And a lot of you have had questions about how I'm actually doing internet in the van. And this is something that has kind of come, I don't want to say come naturally to me, but it is something I've been dealing with for the last several years because I used to actually live out of a 30 foot camper. For about a year and a half, I lived in this camper for really cheap on a uh, camper spot that had some pretty good pricing. However, the only internet they offered was DSL and it was at extremely high rates. So I dug around for a little while. I was kind of leeching off the Wi Fi for a bit and it wasn't all that great either not to mention security issues. I had also looked at satellite internet, which had its own issues in the form of being A, too expensive, B, having data caps, which as people who like to stream and record and download things and so on, doesn't work for me. I'm not just over here checking Facebook and email. Beyond that, the only other option I could see was LTE. And Actually, in rural Missouri, it was pretty good. The options were pretty good. The pricing was pretty good. At the time, you could get a hotspot plan or a plan for your phone that had unlimited hotspot. Uh, and they no longer offer that. But beyond that, I wanted to be able to connect multiple devices without worrying about my phone overheating or being able to take my phone out without everything being disconnected from the internet. So I started looking into uh, travel routers and LTE modems and all of this. And I found a few good ones that worked pretty well, which I'm not going to get into the brands, not the subject of today's video. Uh, I will leave the couple I used linked down below in case you're interested in looking for something yourself. But the issue I had was the subject of today's video, and that is they all basically blocked hotspots or uh, uh, dedicated mobile routers and LTE modems. They do this by looking at the TTL or the time to live. If you're into networking, you know that the time to live is basically a, a, a packet, a number appended to packets that decrements every time it jumps through a node. So if it jumps through a router and then a modem and then several other nodes along the way to its destination, it will decrement each time. And this is a part of the network standard that prevents packets from looping or getting stuck in basically an infinite thing. After, uh, I think the default on Windows system is like 128. So after it jumps through 128 loops, it will just die. Cellular companies use this to figure out whether or not you're going through a router and then to the uh, internet or through your phone and then to the internet. And so they're doing this by looking to see if that's being decremented by a NAT. So if the packet originally comes from your system at a TTL of 65, it goes through the router. That's a NATed thing. And that gets decremented to 64. By the time it reaches the cell company, it is down to 63. And they know you're using a hotspot versus from your phone. It'll be 64 to 63 by the time it gets to its des or 65 to 64 by the time it gets to its destination and they know you're using a phone and your data should pass. Now, they don't necessarily cut off your data entirely. They'll drop it to like 600 kilobits per second, but come on, 600 kilobits per second? You can't even load a modern web page on that. So today we're gonna to be talking about how to hack the TTL using IP tables or whatever method your router supports. And we're gonna get unlimited data on our router. This may or may not violate the terms of service, so this is purely an educational thing. Okay, so now we're in the terminal of the little travel router. By the way, in case you're ever in my situation and you're recording videos about this thing, keep it far away from your microphone because that happens. That was very fun to find out after recording this segment. Anyway, like I said, we're in the terminal of the device here. And basically, all you need to do is run one command for it to work while the system's booted. And then you need that command to be embedded in an IP tables file that gets ran on boot. You can either create a special file, or in my case, I can go to 
Actually, no, the system doesn't have nano. It uses Vi. I believe it was an ATC firewall user. And I think I dumped it all the way at the bottom. Yeah, so this is the command you run. And I will actually copy that and escape WQ. And that's it. Y you've mangled the TTL. Now, this is on this specific uh, modem router combo. Uh, I think it's slightly different on the USG from Unify Ubiquity. Uh, you might also... On the Pineapple Mark 7, we actually... This, this works. You can do this with the Pineapple Mark 7 and a separate modem. You need to install a K mod for the TTL uh, uh, to be able to mangle the TTL. It's not included by default with the stock IP tables configuration. But that's it. IP tables, dash T, mangle, TAC I, post routing, da 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 da. And with that, you have now mangled the TTL so that you can have unlimited data across many devices. Uh, hypothetically. You could, you know, potentially pull down 200, 300 gigs a month with no letters in the mail or anything of the sort. Not that I would know that. Uh, but to give you an idea, here's the speed. Um, I mean, I'm currently, like I said, I'm currently in Denver in the middle of a snowstorm. Actually, south of Denver, but... Yeah, so, I mean, it's usable. Uh, when I'm up in Kirkland in the Washington area, I actually get 120 megs down by like 30 up. I can't show that to you at the moment because I'm not there, but it, it it's honestly more in, than enough internet for 90% of the things I do. I was just playing some CSGO before I decided to record this video. Latency is good enough, very little in the way of packet loss. You're not going to stream 4K content on this, but up in the PNW or maybe the Bay Area, if you're in a low congestion area, works great. That about does it for this video. It was a, uh, a super simple, quick little thing. Once I found it and realized it worked, it was... I've been using it ever since. I've been using this trick for three to four years and haven't had any issues at all, actually. So that's my internet. And it goes everywhere with me. And the cool thing about this router in particular is you can run a VPN on it and connect to Wi-Fi when you do find it. So your connection's encrypted to some server somewhere all the time. Anyway, that's about it. So uh, hope you all had a great Halloween. And uh, thanks for watching. Glitch out. Thanks for supporting Hack5. Find all our shows, community, and Pentest products at hack5.org.